Hello, my name is Kimberly Burnside. I'm a PhD student at Concordia University in Montreal. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our manuscript that's published in Developmental Science. Um, this study looks at 16 month olds understanding a false belief um, using an inanimate object. So the goal of the study was to use a violation of expectation task, which is an implicit task that typically taps into false belief understanding in infants. Um, but we had a twist, we used an inanimate object a mechanical crane instead of the human agent that typically does the movements in this task. Um, it, the violation of expectation task typically measures false belief understanding, which is an aspect of theory of mind. And false belief was traditionally thought to emerge around the age of four because it was measured using explicit tasks. And those tasks rely a lot on verbal abilities and executive functioning. Um, and implicit tasks, which rely on spontaneous responses, were developed in order to tap into theory of mind understanding in younger age groups like infants. Um, so um, implicit tasks either rely on um, infants' anticipation of an event before the event happened or measure infants' reactions after an event occurred. An example of the latter one is the violation of expectation task. So in this task, an actress usually interacts with a toy, places it in a green box on one side, and repeatedly goes to that object in that green box to demonstrate that her goal is to get that object. And then eventually she sees the object move to a yellow box on another side, and then while she leaves, while she's gone, the object goes back to the green box. This actress is, thought, is said to have a false belief that the object is in that yellow box even though it now is in that green box. When she returns, she either searches in the yellow or the green box. The yellow box is believed congruent because it's congruent with her understanding of where the object is located. The incongruent condition um, elicits a longer looking time on the part of the infants because they're surprised that she goes to that green box because she thinks that that object is in the yellow box. Um, the longer looking shows that the infant's expectations of the actress's actions is violated. So we use this task using a mechanical crane that did the exact same movement as this actress. So interacting with that object, turning to the, each boxes uh, to simulate searching for that object. And if infants have a sophisticated understanding of false belief, they should understand that only living, uh, living uh, beings like humans have mental states and not toy cranes. Um, so if they have a sophisticated understanding of that concept, we would expect a different looking time pattern than in the original paradigm. Interestingly and very excitingly, we found that we replicated this looking pattern. When the crane turned to the green box at test, the infants were surprised. Why is the crane turning to the green box? Um, so they looked longer in that in that test trial than when the act, the crane turns to the yellow box. Um, and what this implies is that um, infants either overattribute false belief to any kind of agent that displays animacy cues. This crane showed that it was goal directed, kept going for that object. That's one animacy cue, and it also had self propulsion, which is another animacy cue. These two cues probably were enough for the, the infants to think of the mechanical crane as an animate object. So maybe the infants just attribute very widely these false beliefs to any agent uh, that displays these types of cues. Or it could also indicate that infants, instead of thinking of mental states, are submentalizing, which was recently um, proposed. Um, infants maybe are making a, an association between movements, shapes, and colors in the scene. The last time the agent was seen with the, with the object in a box, it was in that yellow box when the agent saw it go to that yellow box. So maybe that was the association the infants made and when the actress returned or when the crane returned at the test trial and turned to that green box, that is perceptually novel. And that could explain why infants look longer because the test trial looks different than the last time the agent was present. Um, these two uh, explanations, so over attribution or submentalizing could explain the present results. Um, the mechanisms underlying this looking pattern still needs to be um, 
elucidated. So um, we look forward to doing more research in this field. And if you're interested in um, learning more about this project, you're more than welcome to read the article on the website of developmental science. Thank you very much.